Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be going over the 2.5D system inside of Fantasy Grounds VTT, as well as the camera modes inside of Fantasy Grounds. We have several different camera modes now. We have the top-down mode, which is the traditional way of viewing the images inside of Fantasy Grounds. In addition to that, we have some 3D cameras that we can access. And different ways that we can access these cameras is by dropping down the toggle toolbar on the image record and toggling this camera mode button. This will toggle us from either being in top-down or 2.5D to the uh, corresponding uh, opposite. If we have a token on the playing field, it will also toggle into token view, which will allow us to be able to see from a token's perspective if we have that token selected. Inside of the 2.5D view here, we're able to move around with the WASD keys, as well as the middle mouse button uh, to look around or free look. We can also move up and down with the X and C keys, X for up and C for down. And if we press the space bar, we're able to freely look around as well. We can also access this mode by unlocking our uh, image record and moving into the play tab. We can see we have a view type here, a free camera 3D, which is the mode we are currently in. And we can switch to top down. If there is a token on the playing field, we're able to select that token and view from that token's perspective. The big new feature that we have is this new object that can be located in the layers tab. This object can be represented in both the top down and 2.5D mode. We have the ability to choose which image will be displayed in which mode. Here I have a barrel set up. This barrel has a top image as well as a front image. I'll place the barrel on the middle of the playing field here. And when we switch our camera mode, you can see that it now automatically displays the forward facing or front view of this object. I can also place objects in this mode. And correspondingly, if I toggle back, you can see that I have created one new object. Each one has its corresponding image appropriately displayed depending on the mode that we are in. Toggling between this, you can see that we also have some ability to control how this image is displayed to us. And what I mean by that is uh, these subcontexts here, we can have it so that it will always face the camera in the horizontal direction here. However, this does not allow it to do so in the vertical. To do that, we just have to toggle this on or off, and this will allow us to display that image appropriately. As you can see here, this barrel does not have all axes able to be uh, rotated towards the camera and only in the horizontal, where this one has both. Toggling this off, you can see that it will snap to its uh, upright position and moving down in the play area here, you can see all will follow us appropriately. We can also make this image static, meaning that its rotation will not be uh, interfered with by the, by the camera itself or the location of the camera. Instead, it has a static location in the world. The image can still be rotated as normal. And in this particular instance, we are able to add additional facings of this. So if I were to add two, for example, what we will have is two intersecting faces. Three will do three, and so on. Although this is not the best opportunity to use this for a barrel, tufts of grass and things along those lines, it works exceptionally well. Again, we can turn this back to one, rotate this, or even toggle it back. In this edit mode, we're also able to adjust any of these parameters, including changing of the image itself. Here we have the front image selected. And if I were to swap this out for a column, You can see that it maintains the size of the barrel, but has changed the image. This is also able to be done with the top part of the image. If I were to switch it over now to the top of the column itself, switching back and forth, you can see that I've been able to interact with this image even after being placed 
and changing its display image accordingly. In addition to this, I will switch back to the barrel. We're able to adjust the size, creating a new image here. You'll see that there is a new icon next to the height and width. This locks between the top and front view. Any sort of size adjustment that I do here, and let's say, for example, making this 2x2, two two, you can see the forward-facing image, or front image, is also adjusted likewise. Turning this off, however, will separate the front image from the top image in the size adjustment. As you can see here, the size adjustment has been applied to the top image where appropriate and not where appropriate. Likewise, we can do the same with the front image. If I were to change this back to 4 and this one to 2, You can see that it has a much smaller image on the top, as we would expect, and the same size on the forward image. This also has the same aspect lock ratio that can be toggled on or off inside the image itself. And here we can do the same thing. We can toggle this off, and I can make this oblong if I wish, because this is not linked to the forward image. It will have no impact on that image itself. We can do the same with the front image. If I were to change this to something very short, maybe something along the lines of one, and I stamp the image, you can see it is now a short squat barrel. Again, we can change this to anything that we wish. And without this being toggled on, it will not have any impact on the top image itself. A new feature to this is by hitting the reset button, we can clear these out because the object does not require it to have a top image. It can have just the forward image if we wish, placing something like this arch. And stamping this image down, you can see that there is no representation in the top view. However, we do have one. Let me just clear this out here. In the forward view. We can still interact with this image the same way as we would expect by turning on or off it being static. And we can also increase the number of intersecting sides it has. In addition to that, the object also accommodates all animated WebP and WebM files. Here we have an animated image. This can be placed down. And again, its top image will be displayed accordingly. and its forward image as well. It should be noted that by, um, it should be noted that if we toggle on the static orientation, we will have some limitations on the amount of transparency an image can have. However, this also does follow all the same rules as before. We can change its tint if we wish. We can unlock this, change its size, and so on. All right, let's move over to do a wall. Moving into the Immersive Dungeon Pack, I will grab a wall, and I will demonstrate some minor usage of line of sight and lighting inside of this system. Here, I'll turn on the grid so I can line up a wall. And I'll snap this to the grid here. 
And then I will rotate this to make this perfectly fit with the other elements. Moving into the 2.5D workspace, you can see that all of this lines up perfectly. From the top-down view, I will switch over to doing a wall layer. Creating this line of sight, one thing should be noted that the line of sight now is directly on the forward-facing image. To alleviate any sort of issue, we will want to put in a small peak value, which will allow us to see the image without hindrance. This also interacts with the lighting system. And I will place a small light on this layer as well. And moving back into the play tab, we turn on our lighting system and our line of sight. Moving back into this mode, you can see that everything works as expected. It should be noted that when this is illuminated, any side of a front image, its back will also be illuminated. However, exceptional environments can be made by using the different lighting elements and line of sight. All adjustments can be made in either mode, top-down or 2.5D. We can adjust the size of this light. To show off how all of these systems work together to create an extremely immersive environment. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to see what you create with these new tools.